Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, okay, we gonna present DPTK quality and cellmeter uh, stuff. Uh, it's great in to the uh, the NFV and the subtitle is the missing link between my telecom cloud and the uh, NFV structure. So we're gonna present with uh, Mar Mariam and Emma can make to come here, but and Carlos and me, Ryota Mibu from NC. And it's it's about the cloud. So <laughs> cloud is very nice. You can get servers and you can run on the uh, your services on top of it without the notion of the uh, back end technology or the uh, physical uh, servers availability, whatever. So it's very nice. But you might notice someone eating your cloud. Hey, your resource will may uh, stop or disrupt it with someone else. Maybe it's uh, the noisy neighbor or yourself or the, the physical failure of the servers. What is? <laughs> Whatever. And in the end, you might realize that uh, your cloud will be shrink or damaged and also your service will be uh, again damaged and that don't mean it's very, very bad thing to you and also for your end users. So we need uh, more enhancement or your ability to uh, monitor or see your cloud what to identify what's happening. And in the most telco case, uh, as you may know, there's a, a small and medium size of the uh, deployment and will be connected in a one big place with a large scale cloud. So you can, you may have the hundreds or hundreds of thousand infrastructure systems including servers or the other monitoring services as well. And for, for the future and IOTs, you may have more devices and client and uh, it, it increase the, the service demand and also the network traffic. And in this situation, you still may be asked to remain the same level of service quality and the expectation from the user might be uh, the same. So you have to make your service available when, whenever and wherever the, the service or the, or about the service type or the, the network was closed. So, and the monitoring part is, is very important for us to identify the malfunction of the, your cloud and the uh, overall system performance. And so we think it's very important for us to expanding amount of data availability uh, and also the improving alarming functions in our cloud. So we need telemetry. Telemetry is a cornerstone for billing, benchmarking, intelligent orchestration, and cloud management. So this is a really imp important phrase for all of us. So let's uh, pass to the Mariam, uh, sorry, no. Carlos, to introduce use case and more technical details. Thanks. Um, so as Riata mentioned, um, now everything is on the cloud and there is IoT coming to the cloud. There is a lot of devices connected, a lot of uh, broadband, everything. Um, and we need telemetry to uh, be able to charge properly our customers, uh, do some benchmarking and do some intelligent orchestration and fault management. 
So in this session, we are going to focus uh, a bit more on fault management as one use case and specific to uh, in telcos. So one use case in, in, in telcos is to uh, deploy the services in an active standby uh, manner. So we can have um, one uh, VNF, um, oh, it, it, it will come later, but in, in an OpenSAC uh, deployment, we have the controller nodes, we have the many compute nodes, and also networking nodes and, and all that. Um, and what we want to do is to monitor uh, the network. So, and in this case, we can monitor um, uh, the, the link of the network, so physical uh, resources and also virtual resources using DPDK, and that's the example that we are going to, to give here, and, and we will collect, collect a lot of metrics, a lot of samples, and push it to the, to the cloud, to the, to the controller, and based on that, we can do some intelligent uh, decisions. Uh, we can have performance metrics, we can, we can, we can detect uh, failures happening on the network side, etc. So in this case, we will have um, the controller node and two compute nodes. We have Celometer, we have CollectD, CollectD is a monitoring system, and also OVS with DPDK. So OVS with DPDK will be monitoring the, 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 the links, it will report to CollectD, CollectD will push all of these, 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 these metrics uh, to Celometer, and then later, uh, if there is something wrong, for instance, uh, we can notify the user, users through uh, a AODH, as you want to call it. So, at first, we have everything, the cloud deployed, everything is, is ready and, and running. So, the link status is okay, thumbs up on that. Perfect. Um, so, again, um, in the telco, we have um, many cases where we have a, um, a service, a virtual network function, VNF deployed in one compute node and the other one in standby mode in another compute node. And so at first, everything is working. But if we detect something um, on the physical or virtual, virtual uh, infrastructure that is going wrong, some, someone just was stupid enough to plug out the cable without doing some, uh, some actions before, uh, then it's important to detect this. So, it's a big problem, okay? What should we do in this case? In the telcos, we switch from the active VNF to the standby one. And um, the problem is, it's not easy to, to, to detect this. With OVS DPDK, uh, with uh, CollectD, and now with the alarming functionality in, in OpenStack, that's a bit more convenient uh, uh, if we simplify that. And we will show a couple of uh, blueprints in, in OpenStack in different projects where we were able to monitor, do some orchestration uh, alarm the, the user, and the user can then um, quickly react to this event. So, now I will pass to Mariam to explain DPDK stuff, collect the, and all that. Um, hi folks, uh, my name is Mariam Tahan. I'm a network software engineer at Intel, and I'm also the project tech lead for software fast path service quality metrics in OPNFE. By the way, I'm only gonna say that once, so it's gonna be SFQM for the rest of the presentation. Um, for those of you who aren't uh, aware of what DPDK is, it's the Data Plane Development Kit, and that is an open source project uh, that provides the utilities, libraries, and drivers to enable fast packet processing in user space. And as Carlos mentioned, CollectD is a system statistics collection daemon. Today, I'm gonna to give you a quick overview of SFQM. Uh, we're gonna look at some of the features that we've been implementing in DPDK and CollectD, and how you can use those features to uh, pull statistics from DPDK 
and relay them all the way back to Solometer. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, the ability to measure and enforce telco KPIs in the data plane will be mandatory for any telco grade NFEI implementation. To meet this requirement, SFQM has been developing the utilities and libraries in DPDK to support three things. Firstly, the ability to measure telco traffic and performance KPIs, such as packet delay, packet delay variation, and packet loss. Secondly, the ability to monitor the performance and the status of your DPDK interfaces. And thirdly, the ability to detect and report violations that can be consumed by higher level fault management systems. Today's talk focuses on the monitoring and the performance, uh, monitoring the performance uh, and status of the DPDK interfaces. So what are the SFQM features uh, that are available to allow you to do that? Well, actually, the features fall into two categories. Firstly, DPDK features, and secondly, collect D features. On the DPDK side, we implemented an extended statistics API. This was a predefined API in DPDK. We simply implemented it for the drivers that were available, the 1 gig, the 10 gig, and the 40 gig NIC drivers. And what this extended stats API does is that it augments the generic statistics API. With the generic stats API today, you get the aggregated stats right across your lower level registers. So if you're looking at your error registers in the through the generic stats API, you're not necessarily aware of which of the underlying error registers actually causing your aggregate count to increment. And this is where the extended stats API comes in. It allows you to look at the hardware level statistics registers essentially um, uh, on your NIC and expose that information all the way back up to the DPDK application. So now you can see exactly uh, what the cause of the errors is. Is it undersized packets coming in your system? Is it uh, CRC errors? And you get a much more detailed view about what's going on there. On the Collect D side, we implemented two plugins. Firstly, a read plugin called DPDK Stat, which uh, pulls the statistics and link status from, um, from DPDK using the extended NIC statistics API for the stats and generic uh, link status functionality from DPDK for link status. And the second plugin we developed was a Solometer plugin. And this Solometer plugin is capable of relaying any of the read statistics that are pulled by Collecti off your system to Solometer. So it looks after the transformation into Solometer samples and posts them to Solometer. So how do these actually work together? Well, the idea is that you would have something some DPDK application running on your compute node. In the case of our example, we have OBS with DPDK. It has a VM attached to it, and it's doing some sort of packet processing on that compute node. Collecti then runs as a service on that uh, compute node. And Collecti is usually configured to run at a particular interval to pull statistics uh, off the system. So uh, when the interval triggers, uh, the Collecti process initiates a read on all enabled read, read plugins. In this example, DPDK stat is enabled. It goes off, it retrieves the statistics from OVS with DPDK, and it also retrieves the link status for any of the interfaces that are bound to DPDK. Uh, DPDK stat then dispatches those values to the main Collecti process, which then pushes those values to all enabled write plugins. In the case of our example, the Solometer plugin. The Solometer plugin then transforms those samples into Solometer samples and posts those values to Solometer. So let's dive into the details of the two plugins and how they, little bit, and how they work. I apologize about the coloring. I should have gone for something a little bit more visible. But nonetheless, uh, I'll, I'll walk through it. Um, how the DPDK stat plugin works, as I mentioned, it's an input plugin, so it reads statistics off your system. Uh, but what we had to do was actually fork off a DPDK secondary process, and that's the DPDK helper process you can see on the diagram there. Why we need to fork off this process is because we don't want to have to restart the daemon whenever your DPDK application, which is usually your primary process, uh, dies. Now, the difference between a DPDK primary process and a secondary process is that a primary process can initialize the shared memory and the resources for DPDK, whereas the secondary process simply attaches to that primary process's shared memory. It can't do any initialization. Um, but uh, there is no process, there is no functionality within DPDK at the moment that allows you to release all of the resources 
um, once you're to release all of the resources as a function call uh, to the DPDK API. So for that reason, we have to uh, kill the DPDK helper process uh, in the background when a primary process dies. Um, so allow me to just step through it step by step. When your DPDK application starts, uh, your DPDK primary process, it actually initializes a configuration file. It holds a write lock on this configuration file. When your DPDK secondary process starts, it actually holds a read lock on this configuration file. So when your primary process dies, in order to be able to restart another primary process on your compute node, you need your, help, your secondary process to release that read lock that it still holds on the configuration file. So as I mentioned, <laughs> there's no graceful way to allow us to release this from the DPDK side. So what we do is we kill the process we let the kernel look, that, look after the cleanup and releasing that lock for us in the background. And now, voila, a new DPDK primary process can start up on your system and you don't have to kill the collect e service because uh, this, the secondary helper process was already killed and you can just spawn off a new one to go off and retrieve the stats for you again. So you might be wondering, <laughs> how do we actually share this, the statistics between the DPDK helper process and DPDK stat? So the answer is actually through a POSIX shared memory object. Um, when DPDK stat is initialized, it initializes a POSIX shared memory object, and it also initializes two semaphores. Uh, it looks for a DPDK primary process, and once one is detected to have been kicked off or started up, uh, so you have some sort of DPDK application running on your platform, uh, it forks off uh, DPDK, the DPDK helper process. Now the DPDK help pro helper process uh, mem maps that shared memory and it's capable of writing to that shared memory. But it only writes to that shared memory when DPDK stat kicks a semaphore uh, indicating that, hey, you need to go read some stats for me. The DPDK helper process reads the statistics uh, into shared memory and it also retrieves the link status and then it kicks uh, the second semaphore indicating to the DPDK stat uh, plugin, uh, sorry, to the DPDK stat process that, ne okay, now I have the stats, I have link status, you can go and dispatch these values to the main collect D process. So now we're, we have uh, retrieved statistics at this point from DPDK as far as the main collect D process. So we want to write these these samples that we've collected to uh, Solometer. So what we did was we uh, implemented a Solometer plugin that takes advantage of two things. Firstly, um, Solometer's RESTful API that allows you to add custom meters, uh, custom meters to Solometer. And secondly, the Python uh, plugin, uh, the Python bindings that are available to you within Collect D. So now, um, the, when, when Collect D starts and the Solometer plugin is enabled, it registers a write callback with the main Collect D process. Once the main Collect D process has, re has retrieved all the relevant samples from uh, the read plugins, uh, it, it kicks, or I suppose it, it uh, calls all of the callbacks. Um, in this case, the Collect D Solometer plugin callback for writing. And as part of that process, the plugin transforms the samples into solometer samples, uh, and it does a HTTP, a HTTP post uh, directly to the solometer, solometer API. So now we have uh, passed link status and statistics, low level statistics, all the way from our physical NIC uh, to solometer. At this point, uh, maybe not at this point, shortly I'll hand you over <laughs> to Carlos who's gonna talk about what happens once those stats are, are passed on. Um, so for us, there are some limitations to the plugins that we've enabled to date. Um, so we have, we have a bit of work to do. Uh, on the link status side, what we would like to do is take advantage of the notification plugin architecture in Collect D um, to simply post an event when link status goes down uh, rather than passing it as a generic statistic to Solometer to date. And on top of that, then adding uh, an alarm separately. Uh, so we'd like to be able to post notifications directly uh, to AODH. The other thing we'd like to do is uh, 
relevant to a feature we call DPDK Keep Alive. And DPDK Keep Alive is a heartbeat mechanism for packet processing cores in, in DPDK. It, pr it protects against uh, stalls, uh, or sorry, it, it detects stalls or application thre thread failure within uh, your DPDK application. So we'd like to be able to expose um, the core liveliness or the core deadliness in this case uh, all the way to AODH. So again, we'd like to take advantage of the notification um, plugin architecture in, in Collective to allow us to do that. Uh, some things we'd like to do in the future are performance, uh, scalability, and aggregation analysis uh, for what we have. Uh, we'd like to do some Naki integration as well, and in the future, even uh, look at developing a plugin for Open vSwitch uh, with or without DPDK. So hopefully it will be an agnostic uh, Open vSwitch plugin that is capable of retrieving not just port stats, but flow level statistics in the future. And this is the end of my presentation. <laughs> uh, so we are now going to um, talk about uh, Doctor. It's an OPNFP project. Um, and later on, we will show a quick demo of how these two projects, SFQM and Doctor, are collaborating and how we are learning from each other and feeding back each other. Um, so in the beginning of the presentation, um, we said that telemetry is important. It can be used for uh, benchmarking, billing, and also fault management. And Doctor is addressing this, this, this uh, later case, uh, fault management. So um, it's fault management and maintenance uh, framework we are working in OpenFV as part of the telco space, and the main uh, four actions that uh, we do is identifying requirements. So we work with uh, operators and also vendors to understand what are the, 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 the major requirements that we have to address for fault management and maintenance. Also then we do some gap analysis so we study uh, OpenStack, the different uh, projects in OpenStack. We also do um, gap analysis on uh, some other projects outside of OpenStack. Uh, then based on these uh, gap analysis, um, we identify some, something, some, some actions that are needed to be implementing some, some, some work. So we implement and we push everything uh, upstream, so to OpenStack, uh, to the PDK, to collect the, so everything is open source and, and upstream first. And later on, we, as part of OPNFV projects, we take all these projects um, with our code base, we integrate and we test. Uh, so that in the end, we have an OPNFV release, we ca you can just download, install, and you have everything uh, installed, integrated, tested, everything will work hopefully. Um, the four key re uh, requirements for Doctor is consistent resource state awareness. Uh, this one um, is about having the, the exact state of our cloud so that when there is some, some failure happening in our uh, infrastructure, we are aware of this, this state. Um, this is important because um, so far, uh, there are some, some, some uh, components in OpenStack that do not um, detect some, some failure. So they, they, they are saying that their, their state is up where they are not because they're, they're think that there is something causing a, a malfunction there. Uh, the other one, yeah, and very important, is immediate notification. So as part of, of our gap analysis, we detected that uh, Solometer uh, was not able to quickly notify the, the user, and here the user can be the cloud operator, the cloud administrator can be, um, in Etsy terminologies, can be the VNF manager, can be the NFP orchestrator, or anything sitting on top of OpenStack. So we are talking about telco, uh, but it can be used for anything, enterprise, whatever. Um, and with our, with this item, immediate notification that we are, we have also addressed, 
uh, we could notify uh, the, the user uh, within one second, whereas before it was a couple of minutes, but I will talk about that later on. The third uh, key requirement is extensible monitoring. So we understood uh, from talking with different people that there are different people using different monitors, uh, monitoring systems, and many of the time they have even not just one single monitoring uh, platform running, monitoring the, 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 the visual and physical infrastructure, but also two, three, four, five, ten, whatever. Uh, so it is important to have this, um, this platform, this um, framework that can support mul multiple monitor solutions and also um, um, create this southbound interface so that we have a consistent um, uh, and standardized uh, API there. The last one is fault correlation. It's also very important so that when we have a lot of alarms coming, a lot of triggering, um, we have to be able to detect and to know from where, what was the, the root cause um, of this failure. So sometimes there is one link that fails in the network side and there is a lot of more uh, links failing because of that one in specific. So if we get a thousands of alarms because of network failures events, we want to narrow down to the exact uh, problem. What was the root cause? So we do uh, root cause analysis and also we have a, a programmable dynamic um, framework that can uh, accept policies and so that if there is an event, we can immediately uh, call, enforce a policy. So these four key um, requirements can map to the doctor um, framework architecture on the right hand side. So we have the controller part, which are the normal open stack services that we know, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, etc. We also have the notifier that is responsible for notifying the, the user and that's in OpenStack uh, AODH. Um, it's part, or it was part of Celometer, of the alarming functionality, the monitor, and the inspector. A use case is this one. So we have a, an event um, in our uh, NFV infrastructure. Um, Let's assume it's a uh, OVS TPDK uh, interface um, that, um, that there is some, some problem with that. We can notify, we can detect, we can notify. And so we pass, uh, not this one. Okay. We can notify uh, through the monitor, the inspector of this failure. Um, based on policies, we can, um, find what are the affected um, uh, resources. And based on that, we can also update the, the, their, their state. So if for, because of a network failure, we cannot access any, any longer a compute node, for instance, then all the virtual machines running on that compute node uh, have to be marked as in an error state, for instance. So we do that in step three. And in step four, um, when there is this event, um, the, 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 the user is notified that uh, his or her uh, virtual machines are now in an error state. And this is an immediate action, an immediate notification now. So mapping these four um, generic um, platform agnostic, let's say, uh, components to the OpenStack ecosystem, we can see that in the controller side, we can be talking about Nova, Neutron, and Cinder. On the notifier, AODH, inspector, we can have a couple of them, depends, we are serving. So we can have Congress, we can have Vitrage, we can, uh, we can have Monasca. On the monitor, we can have a couple of them as well. Uh, Zabbix, Collect, D, Nagios, or 
have a plenty of, of them available uh, on the open source world and also proprietary ones. Our work in the doctor projects for the Liberty and uh, Mitaka release uh, was mostly focused on the, on the first two key requ uh, requirements, consistent resource uh, state awareness and immediate notification. Um, two important blueprints that we proposed and were accepted and, and merged in Liberty and Mitaka releases were these two ones, the event alarm and the state correction. So for the uh, event alarm, um, we, during our uh, gap analysis, we noticed that it can take seconds to minutes to be alert uh, of a, an event, a, something that is wrong or we exceeded a, a threshold or there is a, a server down, things like this. Why? Because there were two polling mechanisms in place and if we are out of sync, it's even worse. So it, it can take a couple of, of minutes. So what we proposed was a event-driven alarming uh, functionality where um, components like Nova, for instance, could immediately notify, send this event to the message bus and AODH is listening and taking this message and immediately alerting the, the, the user. So we went from several seconds to minutes to within one second. And that was a, re a really uh, important uh, requirement for the operators because of the active standby switch failover, failover. So we don't want our services to be down for a couple of seconds or minutes. The other second uh, blueprint we implemented was in Nova, the state correction, or you must, probably you, you have heard of the uh, Nova um, Marcos Down API. Uh, in this case, if we have a, an external monitoring solution, monitoring the, the compute host, um, we can probably detect a lot faster or with a lot more flexibility and we can monitor more things um, than just the Nova compute service itself. And is so if we detect something is wrong, we can now, through the, this new API, mark this compute node as down. And that will trigger an event to the message bus, AODH can take it, and if the user configures, can this, uh, get this alarming. From the project creation to the Brahmaputra release, released in March 2016, um, we have worked on AODH, Nova, and we are also working on a couple of more projects, uh, namely uh, Neutron, Cinder, and also Congress, Betrage. Uh, we, have, we have also uh, integrated Zabbix and DPDK in the OpenFC uh, platform. Um, and the important part here to mention is that in between March 2015 and September 2015, we worked upstream in OpenStack um, to, by proposing these blueprints and also have them accepted and implemented. And we managed to, to do that. And later on, after September 2015 to March, it was the integration phase, testing, and, and all that, and just waiting for OpenFE to be uh, released, to release the next uh, version. These are three blueprints implemented in Liberty. Um, important here to mention um, is that we are a, a project that consists of multiple companies, vendors, and operators. So we welcome everyone to join. In this case, NEC, Intel, and Nokia uh, participated in this effort. From OpenFV, Brahmaputra re release, and the Li Liberty and Mitaka uh, cycle to the next one, um, we extended our focus of contributions. 
we are now also working on the monitoring part and the, the inspector part. So that's where uh, DPDK, CoFD, um, and, um, and Solometer comes in, in the monitoring part. We also had some two other presentations on the inspector during this uh, open, open SAC summit. Um, and as so, yeah, Zabbix, CoFD, Nagios, you can support all of these, uh, Congress, Vitrage, etc. An updated table so far of implemented completed blueprints are these ones. As you can see, again, um, multiple companies jumping in and helping each other. And putting everything together, SFQM plus doctor, we can see that, or we can get a very good view of our platform in terms of metrics and the current state of the network. And based on that, we can notify the user in case of any events affect, affecting their, um, their uh, resource, virtual machines, storage, networking, etc. So we have a quick demo, just a video, um, where we will show uh, a link status check. So the PDK is checking the the, the, the DPDK interfaces. We have the full detection propagation, so from DPDK to collect the solometer, the inspector component. Um, we, will, we will update the, um, the Nova Compute service because we are saying, okay, if this interface is, is, is down, so there is no connectivity, uh, there is no, no need to have these um, compute nodes. Um, in the in the schedule in the scheduler, so let's just mark it as down and um, update the, the 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 current state of all the virtual machines running on that compute node, and alerting the user. So that resource state correction alarm, and then later on, uh, do the uh, active standby service switching failover. So we will start, uh, it's pretty small. So in this window, um, we are just preparing our platform. So we are um, booting some virtual machines in compute node one and compute node two. In compute node one, we have the active, stand, the active uh, VNF running. It's just an uh, HTTP server. And on compute node two, we have the, the second um, um, VNF. So if I skip it, yeah, just starting. On the top left side, um, we have we are monitoring. We are getting this this uh, the current state of the um, the interface link from a cellometer. Um, the the its value is one, so it's good. Um, on the next one, we have the current state of the Nova compute uh, nodes. So compute node one uh, is up, and on the second, on the third one, we have two virtual machines: server one in compute node two, one and um, server two in compute node two, and they are all active. On the top uh, right hand side, um, we have just a client refreshing the page. is being served by being served by server one, so everything is okay. And on the other uh, window, the application manager plug, it's the, the consumer, the, the, the operator. So it will get notified of events um, and then do the, the switch over. So there was the event coming. So basically here, DPDK detected a, a link down. So it reported through collect D to cellometer. So its value now is zero. The, um, the current state of the compute node is now down and the virtual machine is in error state. So based on this um, event, we notified the user and he switched to the, um, act to the standby node.
sorry. Uh, just to summarize, I wanted to share with you uh, a bit of an apt analogy uh, about the work that we're trying to do, really. So trying to manage a complex cloud solution without proper, telemetry without proper telemetry infrastructure in place is like trying to walk across a busy highway with blind eyes and deaf ears. You have little to no idea of where the issues can come from and no chance to take any smart move without getting in trouble. So what we're trying to do by combining uh, the solution between DPDK, CollectD, OpenStack, and Doctor is, uh, is essentially painting the pedestrian crossing. So putting the building blocks in place to allow us to uh, not cross the highway blind and deft. <laughs> so uh, I really encourage you folks to come and join us in uh, OPNFB in the Doctor Project and SFQM if you're interested uh, in contributing there. Thank you very much for your uh, time. <laughs>